Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing another episode of Watchlist Wednesday. Um, I do want to go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Today is not Wednesday. It's not even close to Wednesday. Uh, my entire video schedule for this week got really thrown off. Something I have had kind of like a personal issue come up. So uh, my entire schedule for this week shifted a lot so today we're gonna be doing my watch list wednesday video um i have a surprise video that might be coming out tomorrow i don't know if it's coming out tomorrow or if it's coming out later and then eventually i'm gonna finally actually get to the movies to see kingdom of the planet of the apes and then i'll have that movie review out on the channel but um my entire schedule got like completely thrown around this week and i had a lot of issues and i went to a concert last night so i've just been super duper busy but that being said i'm gonna get back uh, on pace and on track and today to finally get into the topic of the video, we're going to be watching The War for the Planet of the Apes. So we can officially uh, say that we've watched the entire Rise of the Dawn of the War of the Planet of the Apes trilogy. Um, is there a better name for it? I don't know. But um, that being said, we're going to go watch The War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, I accidentally spoiled some stuff for it for myself if i'm being totally honest um i have this bad habit of going on to letterbox and kind of like seeing like the overall reviews and everything because i've loved these first two and i think that these first two are great the rise of the planet of the apes and the dawn of the planet of the apes and i was really concerned because i was like how are they going to be able to keep the quality up like these have all been incredible is this third one the same you know is it going to be as good and so i went to just check like the star rating and everything like that and it was like a little bit lower and i was like yikesies so i clicked on it all of the reviews are saying amazing things. So I'm excited for this movie. I'm going to go ahead and pop it on. Um, I think it's currently on Hulu and HBO Max, which is weird. I don't know why they're on multiple streaming services, but hey, I mean, that's good if you don't have Hulu, but you have HBO Max, you can watch it on HBO Max and vice versa. So that being said, I'm going to go watch it. If you haven't seen it, I would totally recommend watching it, but I'm going to be right back with my uh, initial review reaction and all that jazz. Okay, uh, in the past, I've seen a lot of people argue that this is one of the greatest trilogies of all time, and I will admit, I uh, I see that. This was a really good movie. This is a great ending to this entire uh, story, and uh, still keeping up with the uh, really interesting parts with the human aspect of this story, um, I really thought that this movie wasn't going to include humans as much, which I don't know why, because like it's called War for the Planet of the Apes. Obviously, there's going to be a war. It's probably going to be between humans and apes, but um, I kind of like the misdirection of it mostly actually being a war between like humans and other humans and uh it kind of brought back the plague storyline in a really big way and i really liked the dynamic that we had with that um and overall i just really liked everything that they did with the human characters here and everything throughout this entire trilogy where they're setting up the whole thing about the apes are slowly becoming what the humans were and then the humans are slowly becoming what the apes are i love the way that they're kind of like changing and they're like flipping that dynamic um because there's really like a power thing in like you know society real life um where one species is the dominant species and they're the ones who take over everything they're the ones who you know have uh populated the earth and has made uh you know civilizations and stuff like that and uh in real life obviously it's humans in the beginning of these movies it was the humans and now we're finally getting to the point where like the apes are going to be taking control of everything they uh found their home in the end which was really great and uh overall i really really enjoyed this movie so um to kind of talk about some of the main things that i really liked the acting is still incredible. Um, I am so excited we got introduced to uh, a new ape character who wasn't a part of their original group because that was something I had been curious about in the past was like there's a lot of apes that are gaining intelligence because, you know, there's around the other apes that are also gaining intelligence. But I'm like, are there any apes that aren't a part of their group that are gaining intelligence? Because at the end of the day, it's eventually going to be like an entire planet full of apes that are really wise and all-knowing. Like, how does it get to that point? Um, so when we get to meet, uh, I believe they just call him Bad Ape. Like, I think that that's his name the entire movie. When we meet him, and we kind of like, it kind of feels like one of those like post-apocalyptic shows where like halfway throughout a season, you'll run into a random character who has a totally different background and they have a whole different situation going on. But then they join the group and it has like this fun new dynamic shift. That was awesome. I loved everything about Bad Ape. He was absolutely hilarious. He had me laughing my ass off so many times. Um, when he uh, originally went to like go grab a toy or whatever to show that he was from the zoo. And then he like showed it to them and he was just like, this is where I'm from. I'm from the zoo. The zoo is bad. We don't like the zoo anymore. The zoo kind of sucks. And then he goes to like put the toy back and he falls and he just like yells, I'm good. That killed me. That killed me. <laughs> he was so funny. And just, he just had so many great one-liners the entire movie um the sequence which this is such an overplayed trope in movies i know they did this exact same joke in like pirates of the caribbean and other movies but like the whole binoculars thing with people like using binoculars backwards and being like oh my god they're so far away and then the person next to them just like flipping it over and they're like oh oh my god they're right there that trope will always work on me that is just such a funny trope but um overall 
really loved the new addition with that character. Um, I liked, once again, if we're on the topic of new characters, Nova. Everything with introducing that little girl, really great. Um, her arc with uh, the gorilla who passed away or whatever, and she put like the flower in his hair. Oh, oh, that almost got me. That almost got me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna my emotions are gonna be heightened because of my uh, thing that I'm dealing with. Um, so if I'm gonna cry to a movie, it's gonna be at some point in this next couple of weeks, and that almost got me. I'm not gonna lie. That almost got me. Um, but that was that was really good. I really liked that entire um, arc. And everything about that character was really interesting in the way that they set up the fact that um, her not being able to speak is a part of this disease mutation and stuff like that. Really interesting. Um, some of the sequences where we're watching Caesar like mercy kill these soldiers who have the disease is really gruesome and hard to watch. But like, I love it. I think that they did a really good job showcasing that. Um, and that was fun. I don't know if fun was the right word to use that. That was cool. That was great. I enjoyed it. Um, it was really well done. Um, and then once again, talking about new characters, Woody Har Harrelson, Harrelson, I said I was going to figure out how to pronounce it earlier, but I completely forgot. Woody Harrelson, I've always called him Harrelson. I think it's Harrelson. I'm not entirely sure. The guy who plays Hamish in the Hunger Games movies, the guy from, you know, Good Detectives. Uh, is it Good Detectives? True Detectives? I think it's True Detectives. The guy from Now You See Me 1, 2, and 3. Do you guys know that? We're getting a third one. And anyways, off topic. Um, I'm so excited about that. Now you three me. Uh, that's, uh, that's anyways, um, we're going to switch topics. Um, but basically his character in this, he's like the colonel colonel. Is it, is it pronounced colonel? I was reading the reviews right before I started recording this clip. So I kept reading it as colonel. I think it's pronounced colonel or something like that. Um, but yeah, his character. Great. I actually really like the fact that at first he's like, he's super evil. He's so like over the top evil. He's just such a villain. He's such a terrible guy. He's killing a bunch of people that doesn't necessarily need to be killed. He's starting a lot of like extra, you know, fights with the monkeys that he doesn't really necessarily need to be fighting. And it's just like so ridiculous and like menacing. And then whenever he has that first conversation with Caesar, where he kind of is explaining, you know, what he's doing is because there's a disease that's coming and we believe that this disease is actually going to kill us all. So we're trying to eradicate the disease whenever it comes up. So if anybody gets the disease, we just are killing them. And we're trying to fortify and make sure that this disease can't come in our walls or whatever. And um, I think thought that that was a really interesting plot. Um, I think I made this connection during the first uh, movie that I, that uh, of this trilogy or whatever, but I might not have. Um, growing up, one of my favorite video games of all time was a little game called... Plague Inc. or something like that, where basically you would create your own disease and your goal is to, to wipe out the entire planet with some, like, disease. And I realized that, in retrospect, that sounds like a really evil game, but, like, it's just you looking at a map and then there are occasionally being red dots popping up and then eventually you want the entire map to be red. That That's what happens in the game. And, um, it's a fun little game. And, uh, as, like I said, as somebody who played that growing up all the time, uh, you would eventually get to a point where, like, you'd run into certain problems with, like, oh, well, people are no longer, you know, getting the disease because things are happening and, like, there's too little people surviving and they're all, like, staying away from each other and you have to come up with creative ways to get them to, like, get the disease and stuff like that. I kind of feel like some of that, like, was in play during this movie because, like, the stuff with, like, uh, Woody Harrelson's character ends up getting the disease because there was a little stuffed doll and on the stuffed doll had a little bit of blood from the little girl who had the disease and, um him just having that doll ended up giving him the disease and other people who were on that camp ended up getting the disease just because of close proximity and uh that was so well written and so very interesting to me i absolutely love that um but yeah that was cool i think that everything with the plague storyline all throughout these entire movies were fantastic and then uh the last thing that i want to go ahead and talk about is uh caesar's journey throughout these three movies were incredible like i think that these these, these movies are probably one of the best trilogies I've ever seen in the sense that like everything flows so well and Caesar doesn't necessarily have like a character arc for the first movie and a character arc for the second movie and a character arc for the third movie. He has like the one continuous character arc. You see him really fall down in the second movie and he like kind of hits a really low spot. He has to kill Koba and there's a lot of really emotional stuff with that. Um, and in this movie, watching him kind of deal with like some of the PTSD with Koba passing away and with him having some apes that have kind of turned on him in the past, it's really interesting the way that he's able to still stand up and be a leader and be the strongest one out of all of them, even though he's going through this mental struggle. He's going through a lot of physical pain. He can't really, uh, keep going as much as some of the younger people are. And, um, I think that they just do such a great job showcasing him as a powerful leader who's dealing with these mental health struggles and where he's dealing with a little bit of self-doubt, but because he is the leader, he has 
has to stand up and be brave and he needs to put on a strong face and uh he kills it he is so good he's fantastic in this movie and then uh, at the end of the movie when he dies it is incredibly emotion uh incredibly emotional is a very well written death scene and uh, i think that everything about it is just very beautifully well done and uh, i really enjoyed it because that was something that i spoiled for myself accidentally before i started watching the movie and i was like crap he's gonna die and because of it because i knew he was going to die every single fight sequence i was like okay it's gonna happen now oh my god it's gonna happen now oh my god he's about to die now and uh it was stressing me out so i really appreciate the fact that he didn't die in battle and the fact that he got his people to their new home and then passed away like i thought that that was really great um but yeah overall really enjoyed this movie thought it was fantastic anybody who hasn't seen that trilogy i recommend you go watch it right now the first one's on hulu the second two are on hbo max really great trilogy really enjoyed it um i think overall i think i ranked every single one of them above like a 90 so uh if i was to give my final rating for this one i think it's pretty much on par with dawn of the planet of the apes so i'm gonna give this one like another like 94 out of 100 it's really really good um occasionally there are a couple things with the pacing like there are a lot of scenes at the beginning that i'm like this is going a little slow um but overall it's a really great movie this entire franchise is awesome and something that i really like is i've never been the kind of person who likes movies where you have to read like it's part of the reason i haven't watched a lot of studio ghibli movies and stuff like that um but like this movie is so good and so captivating that like you'll read for like maybe like a 10 minute sequence and like you don't even realize that you're reading because you're just so into the story which i love but um yeah that being said that was it for this video guys thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out i love and appreciate you guys so much for watching it and if you liked it feel free to like and subscribe and i will hopefully 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 see you guys in the next one peace out bow 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 ba, ba, ba. back at it again but that's irrelevant flow so smooth they calling me mr elegant like an elephant i got a long nose like a president i've got a few hoes swift with a stutter i'm smooth like butter don't see it coming when i slip undercover like a big dog but i don't bite I'm still a big broad, I'd win that fight. Come match you and I knock out your l l lights.